this month of March has been announced and christened as our month of divine direction. This month, you won't miss it. Amen. Decisions you take this month will be anointed decision. Amen. The Lord will continually guide your step. Amen. Can you confess that to yourself? The Lord will continually guide my step. I will not miss my step. Every decision I take will be anointed decision in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Now I'm going to bring you the broad word of the Lord very briefly. I have tagged, it's a new day. The Lord told me yesterday in Nigeria, it's a new day. Amen. For those of you here in this world, it's a new day. Amen. Take some time to pray in the spirit with me for 60 seconds. As we bring this word of the Lord, it's a new day. Zakal Abaha. Oh, lift up your voice and pray in the spirit. It is a new day. A new day for our nation. A new day. A new day. A new day for me. Mention your name. It is a new day for Joseph. Make sure you are praying for yourself. It is a new day for me. New things I declare. New things I will see. It is a new day for me. New day. New day. Le kuka titi baba barada gadada. Jekla topari andokasa. Rekla topara. I can hear you pray in the spirit. It's a new day for this church. It's a new day. It's a new day. Neleko teperi ante kotoba. Jekla topira ante kota. Reka toperi ante kopa. La kota za kapara. Jako pere kata. La katobara. Repla tota kata. Tabara, replato pepekete, zekra kote bala, lakote shakata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus, precious name, we pray. Amen. Say one more time. It's a, it's a new day. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said to me, for us as a nation and for us as a people in PACM, it is a new day. Can you say that very loud? It is a new day. Take this as God seared the Lord, not just another sermon being preached by pastor. God said, it is a new day for this church. It is a new day for me. The Lord said, the elections are over, but for PACM, new things will start happening. He yeah. said, I should tell somebody, yeah, the next four years, you will see new things. Yeah. Why? Because it's a new day for you. New things will begin to happen in your life. It gave me a scripture, Isaiah 43 from verse 18. Isaiah 43 verse 18. For some people, the last four years has not been fantastic. Many have not enjoyed the last four years. And God said in verse 18, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. If the last four years has not been interesting for you, God said, forget about it. Something great is about to start. Something great is about to happen. Remember not the former things. And God also said, if the last four years has been fantastic, it's good for you, you enjoy it, get ready for something better. Can I hear a louder amen? Get ready for something greater. And verse 19, what is, is he saying? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. From this month of March, you will see new things. New babies. New house. Did I say house? New houses. New estates. New career. New opportunity. Somebody this month, you will start something new. I will do a new thing. It will spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness. And rivers where? In desert. Desert is, uh, Yoruba call it a chalet. A place where no resort Dry land. But God said in difficult places, those of you here in this afternoon, you will get a result. Yeah. I will make a way in the wilderness. Yeah. What, others, what others thought is impossible, God will make it possible for you. Yeah. And rivers. Oh, it's difficult to get rivers in the desert. But God said, mm, you will get rivers in your own desert. Not just water, rivers. There will be a flow in the desert land. The next four years, there will be a flow. Yeah. There will be a flow. In the name of Jesus. And this is the word the Lord is laying upon my heart. He said he's going to do a new thing. Something new is about to happen. Something great is about to happen. Something wonderful is about to happen. Somebody, the next four years will be your years of favor. Yes. Not just for you, you and your entire family favor. Yes. No one saying loud amen will lose his job. Yes. You will not be out of job. Yes. But you will start new businesses. 
your guidance and parent will start new businesses. There will be a new opportunity coming your way. In the name of Jesus, I want you to shout new things I receive. I will do a new thing and it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness. Oh, it looks like difficult right now. God says, get ready. I'm going to make a way. The things you are not planning about, in this service, God will be laying upon your heart. He will be laying breakthrough upon your heart, increase upon your heart, abundance upon your heart. The Lord will tell you who to meet, where to go. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. This is the foundation for the next four years of this year. You will start something new. You will start something great. In the name of Jesus, I declare to a believer here this afternoon, you will not break down. In the next four years, abundance is your portion. You shall be fruitful in the land. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I'm doing my job. One of the job of a pastor is to speak to the people what God is about to do. God, in the next four years for PSEM, is about to do a new thing. He's about to do a new thing. And those of you in this church, online and on ground, you will see new things. You will see new things. Your business, there shall be new openings. New opportunity. There are people here who are going to get new job. From this week, new job. In the name of Jesus. The places they said you will hear from us this week, you will hear from them. New thing is about to happen. That's what God is saying. I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness. They said, this is wilderness. There is no way in the wilderness. I think there is a hymn song that says, my God knows the way through the wilderness. All I need to do is to follow. He wants to lead. He just wants to take Joseph by the hand. Who else is he going to take by the hand? Uh, So God is going to make a way in the wilderness for you. Where others are saying there is no way, God says there will be a way for you. Others says it's impossible. It will be possible for you. Can I hear you shout your fire? Amen. And he says, rivers. That's amazed me. Rivers in the desert. They call it desert, but God says, for Joseph, it's rivers. Others are dying and drying. The sun is too much. But for you, it's a riverside. Enjoying the riverside because you are connected to your source. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11 and 12 is another thing someone is going to see in this ministry. Deuteronomy 28, 11. The Lord will make unto you, the Lord shall make to you his good treasure. Amen. Say, I receive it. He will give you his good treasure. Yeah, this is God's CBN. God says, I'm going to open to you my CBN, my treasure. You know, CBN, the CBN of Nigeria, what is their what? I'm sure it cannot be compared with the CBN of Great Britain or CBN of America. But God said, put all the CBN of the world together. It can't be compared to my good treasure. And he says, I'm going to make it available to somebody here saying, Amen. It will be you. Amen. The Lord shall make unto thee is good, is it made you plenteous in good and in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your cattle. Can I say amen to that? Yeah. In the fruit of your ground yeah. and in the land which we swear to your father to give you. Yeah. It will make you plenteous in goods. Yeah. The Lord will open to thee his good treasure. Yeah. Uh, look at that coming again. He's going to open to you his good treasure. Yeah. He said the heaven to give you rain when? In his season heaven to give you rain in the season. And the Lord says he will bless the work of your hand. And for someone here saying amen, you will lend to nations. How many nations? Including your friends in America. You will lend to nations. And you shall not borrow. In the name of Jesus, you will lend to nations. Stop looking at America as your source. There are many of you here, you will travel to America and give them money. Yeah. Somebody say, Pastor, ah, how is that possible? America should send us money. Uh, as a man think, in his heart, so is he. If you think you can't give them money, then you limit yourself. Look at verse 12. God will open to you his central bank. His good treasure. That's your source, not America. And heaven will give you rain when? In his season. And it will black the work of your hand. And you shall lend to how many nations? Is there an exemption to this nation? America is exempted. UK is exempted. Germany is exempted. How many nations? You will lend to many nations. And you shall not borrow. Say, I receive. 
I obey. You shall not borrow. So, in the next four years, I banish borrowing. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. You won't, it is people who don't have that borrow. So, you won't borrow. Yeah. But some of the pastors, how can you do business without borrowing? Again, it's your mentality. As a man, think. So, you see. If you think, you, can, you will always borrow. And you see, borrowing is a spirit. People who borrow always graduate. They move from borrowing 2,000 to 20,000 to 2 million to 20 million and to 2 billion. I read this week, one former chairman of a bank in one year, a few months, I think they said between a period and a period, he took away billion in cash from the bank. Whether it's political or not, but it's in EFCC net today. He said he borrowed it. They say he stole it. Because he abused his office. But God is saying, he will open to someone here his good treasure. Heaven to give you rain in a season. Bless the work of your hand. Listen, when the work of your hand is blessed, you will borrow. You will have more than enough. And this is what Jehovah is laying on my hand. In 2019 and beyond, to the next four years of this new government in Nigeria, many of you here, you will never borrow. It will dawn on you in 2023 and say, Pastor said it in 2019. You mean I have learned that. And you will have a list of people who have borrowed from you. This is what I do from time to time. When I lend people money, I maintain a list for them. I write their name and their money. They are me. Some of them are defaulted. And I say, Jehovah, let all my debtors, let them remember me today. You know when debtors now become prayer point? Because they did not fulfill their obligation. I pray for someone here. You won't borrow. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, this is what God is promising us. It's a new day. It's a new thing he wants to do. Heaven to give you rain in the season. Open to you is good treasure. It's central bank. I, I, I just coined that verse 12 and consciously in my, in my spirit, I keep saying good treasure means God's central bank. I think you have heard me say it before. Uh, so it's, it's registered in my spirit. I have access to God's central bank. Even the central bank of Nigeria, you don't have access to it. You only have access to First Bank, to GTB. You do not have access to Central Bank as an individual. But I have access to God, good treasure. God, CBN. God, Central Bank. Is it, is, is it supposed to be called CBN? God, CB. Uh, because CBN is Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, C. God, Central Bank. G, CB. Uh, that one letter. You have access to CBN, right? I have a sense to GCB, God Central Bank. It will open to me is good treasure and the heaven. So every time you see rain coming from heaven, that is the Central Bank of God releasing money. Heaven to give you rain in this season. And he said, and he will bless the work of your hand. Accounting, IT, whatever you do. The work of your hand is blessed. Don't be blinded by accounting. Many of you are going to do business. Yeah. If you are one of us, can I see your hand? Big, big time business. World class business. And God is going to bless the work of your hand. Yeah. And when the work of your hand is blessed, he said, you will not learn to how many nations? Many nations. And thou shall not borrow. No borrowing. No debt. It's better to be free. Debt is a burden. If you are not a professional debtor, if the person you owe is talking, you should keep quiet. It's only professional debtors that says Nigeria self is owing. How much am I owing you? What's your problem? You know, those ones are reckless debtors. You know. But a normal debtor. And a scriptural debtor, because it's the Bible that says it, that when your creditor is talking, you should lower your voice. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, no. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 1, 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1, 19. If you be willing and obedient. There is good in this land. And the next four years, you will be a partaker. Yeah. You will eat the good of the land. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray this prayer for yourself. Say, I will eat the good of this land the next four years with favor me. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer for yourself. 
I will eat the good of this land. The next four years will be in my favor. The next four years will favor Joseph. Mention your name. I will eat the good of Nigeria. I will eat the good of America. Mention the nation. The good of Canada. Anywhere you are watching us from. I will eat the good of this land. The next four years will favor me. In the name of Jesus. I receive the good treasure of God. In the name of Jesus. I eat the good treasure of the Lord. The work of my hand is blessed. In the name of Jesus, I will eat the good of the land. Whatever I do shall prosper. The next four years, I declare new things. I declare favor. I declare joy. I declare celebration. No borrowing, no lack, no shame, no reproach. In the name of Jesus, everywhere I go, favor, honor, blessing, whatever I do shall prosper. Lift up your voice. Pray for yourself. Relo shakato labarata. Reklato pikataka. Repakota. I will not be out of job. I declare clients, customers rushing at me. Relato and shaka. International business. International opportunity. La zetu kanto seka bara. Sheko barata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You know, there is no prophecy without what to do. So let's expand what the Lord is saying. First, what is the Lord saying? It's a new day for us as a ministry. It's a new day for us as a people. It's a new day for me as a person. It's a new day for my family. Oh, the air I breathe in in the next four years will be peace, will be progress, will be joy, will be favor. I walk into favor. I walk into excellence. You know, I walk to prepare blessings. I walk into joy and celebration. Good things will not be withheld from me. When it's time to distribute joy, my name will be mentioned. Oh, in the quarters of favor, my name will be mentioned. When it's time for promotion, your name will be mentioned. When it's time for honor, you will be honored. In the name of Jesus. So what am I to do? You must recognize that we are under a covenant, not under a government. As a child of God, Member of this commission, you are under a covenant. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3. You are in this world, you are not of this world. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Another translation said, though we live in this world, we are not of this world. Philippians 3 20, NIV translation. Our citizenship is in heaven. Where are you from? Which country are you from? You know, your, your, your country, your country, your nationality. You sure? Bimpe, your nationality? Mrs. Abarawa? No, we know our state. <laughs> Where are we from? Heaven. Ah. Our citizenship is where? In heaven. This will confuse you some people. No, I'm from Ondo State. I'm from Kwara. No, that is your flesh. We read 2 Corinthians now. He said, though we live in this world, we are not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are representative of God on earth here. We are ambassador on earth here. What happened in Nigeria economy does not affect the U.S. consular. He lives in a different world. Even though he lives in Nigeria. Physically, it's in Nigeria, but it's a nation. And it, it's like that. Every embassy of countries in different nations of the world, they are physically in that country, but they are not part of that country. So you go to uh, some part in Victoria Island, Watercaritin Street, where you have the U.S. embassy. Oh, it's in VI, but it's U.S. U.S. in Nigeria. And you go to different embassies like that. They are nation within a nation. If you need to understand that. You are in Jibou, but you are not from Nigeria. You live in Lagos State, but you don't belong here. Our citizenship is in heaven. So what are you on earth? You are an ambassador. And you see, you live by the dictate of the country you represent. If the American consular in Nigeria want to eat uh, the food they eat in this country, he will eat it in excess. Because they will ship it into Nigeria. 
and sometimes no, 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 no tariff, no custom duty, because they enjoy diplomatic immunity. If you touch them or you go to the embassy to harass anybody, you can be sued. In fact, they can kill somebody within their embassy and you won't even hear. Because within that embassy is not your nation. The moment someone runs into that embassy, the laws of the land where they represent is what reign there, not the law of the environment. What is God saying to us? The next four years, you are going to walk on this earth as a citizen of heaven. Amen. What is obtainable in Nigeria will not affect you. Uh, people will be crying, I just lost my job. You won't know what it means. I've just been promoted. I just got a new job. Yeah. Things are happening in my favor. Yeah. Can I hear you shout a loud amen? Yeah. So please note, if you believe this scripture in Philippians 3.20, you must behave the country you represent. Again, may I ask that question? I ask few people now. May I ask this con congregation? Where are you from? Yeah. Say it very loud. Yeah. So you must walk and do like an ambassador from heaven. You represent heaven. People from heaven don't confess, I don't have money. Because in heaven there is good treasure. And he has promised us in the next four years he's going to open it to us. I will open to you my good treasure. The heaven to give you rain in a season. Citizen of heaven don't say I'm sick. I, from this afternoon, anyone sick in the body, I banish sickness. I come against infirmity. In heaven we don't fall sick. In heaven we don't know lack. Heaven we don't know shame. Even we don't know reproach. We are in a covenant with God. And we must behave where we are from. Heaven things work. There is no PSCN in heaven. No power failure in heaven. Things work in heaven. I pray for someone to have an understanding of this. The next four years you will enjoy life. Amen. You will know the meaning of power failure. Amen. Say fire Amen. amen. This ministry don't know the meaning of power failure. Because we are citizens of heaven. From the days of number two, Owe Street, we don't, I mean, that I can remember, in the last 10 years, we have never operated on PACN as a ministry when we are in service. Even in the days of uh, uh, two, Owe Street. Once in service time, we switch on to generator. Is, this, is, it, is that the best? The economy of Nigeria cannot provide it. But our own source from heaven says I'll make it available. Ultimately is that when we enter your service, power must not fail. Money must not fail. Resources must not be in short supply. Things must work in your hand. And what is God saying? When I come to your house in the next four years, when I come to your office in the next four years, when I ask you, where are you working? You won't tell me, Pastor, I've not started working. Uh, Pastor, there's no work. How much are you paid? He said, Pastor, I'm ashamed to tell you. No. From now, this will begin to work for you. Amen. Business begin to work. Amen. Why? Because you are a citizen of heaven. Take this scripture and get back home. And say, Father, things work in heaven. It must begin to work in my hand now. I am a citizen of heaven. There's no power failure in heaven. The streets of heaven are plated with gold. No short supply of resources in heaven. That's where we pull our strength from. And I'm challenging you this afternoon by the word God is giving to us. He says it's a new day for us. And he said, first you must recognize where you are from. You must recognize your real abode. You must recognize the nation you represent. A consciousness of where you are from will tell us how you behave. In this service right now, I don't know what Oyebola need is. Where's Oyebola's wife? Okay. I don't know what his need is. But I say, Mr. Oyebola, um, by this time tomorrow, you know, it's, it's a play. I'm just, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to credit your account with, I don't even have the amount I want to mention <laughs> physically right now, but I have it in heaven. Yeah, I, I have it, I have it in the, in the central bank of Cherova. I'm going to credit your account with 50 billion naira by this time tomorrow. 
Do you know the multiplier effect of this prayer? Esther over there is already rejoicing. Oh, yeah, what did you do? I don't know me. He will have to me. In fact, I will resign tomorrow. He had in the 50 billion by this time tomorrow. Uh, ah, the HOD says it's my group pastor. Success has many relatives. Before you know it, status change. Levels change. Things begin to happen. Oyebola may not be able to sleep. <laughs> By this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. A lot is coming. By this time tomorrow. Now listen. This is just a mortal man speaking to another human being. I'm going to bless you with 50 billion. And these family members rejoice. Church members, even me, I'll be proud to be your pastor. 10% of that has died. Amen. Yes. If I take 10% of 50 billion, how much is that? Five huh? Five million naira. Five billion naira. My God. On this street. Ah. They will take five, five, eh? five billion. I will get to Yabatek. From here to Yabatek. I'll just be shaking it like this. Who want to sell? <laughs> you want to sell your house? Go to my way. <laughs> take a share. Take a share. <laughs> Praise God. But how much more God is giving you promise, but you can't take it. I will open to you my good treasure. And he's telling you, you are not from this earth, even though you live in this world. Your citizenship from heaven. Your source is not your job. Nigeria is not your source. It's the word of God. This government is not your source. Your citizenship is of heaven. Your source is in heaven. Jehovah is your source. They call him Jehovah Jireh. He is my source. He is your source. The covenant is stronger than government. Stay glue to your covenant. Your relationship with God. Psalm 89 verse 34. Psalm 89 verse 34. God said, my covenant will I not break. Nor utter the words that has gone forth out of my mouth. God will not break his covenant. Psalm 89 verse 34. If it has gone out of his mouth, he's able to perform it. Please, I want you to know this. We are in a covenant relationship with God. We have an agreement with God to dominate this head and not to fail in this head. We have an agreement in, in, with God to enjoy our reign in this head. My covenant, I will not break, nor utter the things that has gone forth out of my heart. God has said it, you will see 50 billion Amen. In, your, in your lifetime. Amen. This church, those of you who like this man and believe that prophecy, you will see 50 billion. In the he said, my covenant, I will not break. Neither, he said, neither will I alter. Stop the things that has gone fall out of my lips. It is not just illustration. I said it's a play, but now it's becoming a reality. In this church, we will have billionaires. Those of you with the loudest amen, you will be one of us. In the name of Jesus. You know, this is how I prophesy. Many years ago, when we were not millionaires, I began to say, very soon you begin to earn a million, a million, a million. And many of us, we have passed that level many years ago. Million Naira is like a shy play for many. And God is saying this afternoon, in this church, in this church, in this church, very, very soon, those of you with the sharpest linear, you'll be be billionaires. <laughs> Why? I will not utter the things that has gone forth out of my mouth. We are in a covenant relationship with God. And let me tell you, God is faithful to the covenant. He stays with the covenant. He respects the terms of the covenant. And what kind of covenant are we talking about? We are talking about the Abrahamic covenant. We are seed of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse of, for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that is hanged on the, on the cross. But verse 14 is my emphasis. He said that the blessing, Christ died so that the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentile through Jesus Christ. That we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
We have received the Abrahamic blessing. Abraham blessings are mine. It is not just in song, it's in reality. And in the next four years, those of us in this church and people listening to me online, you will enjoy Abrahamic blessing. You will not just be singing it, you will see it. You are in Abrahamic covenant. You are in a covenant with God. Abraham did not fail. Abraham did not die a pauper. You won't die as a pauper. In the mighty name of Jesus. No matter the hardship where you live, it won't come near you. They may not be landing a light in Egypt, but there will be light in your own Goshen. Their water may be blood in Egypt, but you in Goshen, you will have good water. In the name of Jesus. So somebody says, Pastor, yes, I agree. I am in a covenant relationship. So what is a covenant? A covenant is a contract between two parties guided by the terms of the contract. A covenant is a contract between two parties guided by the terms of the contract. Two parties we are referring to here is God and man. I am in a covenant relationship. I have a contract with God. And we are guided, me and God, God and I, we are guided by the terms of the, con of the, of the covenant, of the contract. So parties must play their part to see the covenant work for them. And what is God saying? For you to see the prophecy of a new day come to pass. What are we to do? I like you to read it, Psalm 28 from 1 to 13. Blessing in those scripture. But the key to that scripture is in verse 1. It shall come to pass. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord God, to observe and to do, that is the operational word, observe and to do, his commandment, which he command you this day, the Lord will set you on high above how many nations? All the nations of the earth. This is the scripture that gave me visa. No embassy on earth rejoiced me. I put in my document, they give me the visa. Because I, I stay with verse 1 of the scripture. He will set me on high above all the nations of the world. It's a privilege for me to be in America. And America is blessed for receiving me. When I enter their airport, good things. You don't know how many angels travel with me. So the moment I just land in New uh, John uh, F. Kennedy Airport, the angels enter the city. The man will be laughing to stop your pastor. You are welcome to this land. You are welcome to this land. But when you don't carry that consciousness, I've seen a video of somebody, the moment you enter America, the kind of disco dance from the airport, <laughs> Nigeria, you will never see me again. <laughs> never! Enemy of my father's house, you will never see me again. Never see me again. Now, when you have that mentality, you will be watching God in America. Because you see America as everything. No. It's a privilege for America to receive you. If you believe, say amen. Yeah. Anywhere you go. Because your citizenship is not of this earth. America is one of the country of this earth. What's in America? What's in Canada? What's in UK? What's in Germany? What's in Paris? They are privileged to have you. You are going to be having continental... Those nations I just mentioned, you will have branches there. Yeah. Co continental businesses there. Yeah. You will have staff from those nations. Yeah. So when, when you get to that level of reasoning, you will not be Hanging and say, I want to go to that place by force. And that verse 1 says, I will set you on high above the nations of the world. But the key word there is, you must observe to do my commandment. You want to see result. You don't want any embassy to reject you. Obedience is key. We read just now Isaiah 1 19. If you be willing and obedient, then you eat the good of the land. You are not willing. You are not obedient. The good of the land can come. What are we to do? I'm going to expose to you two things we need to do to see prophecy fulfilled. Because when prophecy is released, you don't watch it. You don't celebrate it and just say amen and go to bed. You war it. You fight it until you see prophecy come to pass. Exodus chapter 23, 25. Two things we are supposed to do. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread. Now say amen. amen. From this singular scripture, it means the next four years, you won't look for what to eat. Amen. Bread and butter will never be your problem. Amen. What that means is that you will never be out of job. Amen. Salary will keep flowing. Amen. Multiple sources of income will keep flowing. Amen. There are people here whose faith is on fire. Four sources of income. Amen. And all of them will be doing excellently well. Amen. There are people in this church who will be running multinationals. CEO of great companies of the world. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to have continental branches. Branches in Europe. Branches in America. Branches in Asia. Can I hear your fire? Amen. You serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. That's bread and water. Bread and butter. I will take sickness from the midst of you. Oh my God. Verse 26. And he says, nobody will have miscarriage again. The next four years in this church, no miscarriage. They shall not cast their young, not be buried in the land. And the number of their days in our church, in this place, in the next four years, no untimely death. The number of their days, I will fulfill. I give them soundness of health. But what's the operational word? Verse 25 again is the operational word. You shall serve the Lord your God. The word serve is the reward. And the word serve here is not just come to church and be a worshiper. It's practical service. Practical commitment. Be part of those who make things happen in the house of God. When you serve the Lord your God, those blessings we just read, shall be your portion. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. You have continental business. Things work in your hand. Sickness it takes away from you. The healing you have been looking for is in service. You will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He will take away sickness from the midst of you. You are sick in your body. Say, God, remember how I have been singing in the choir. Take this evil away. The number of your days I will fulfill. Lord, you know how I've been coming to church every Sunday. Take this infirmity away. Take it away from my life. I have been coming here in the last 25 years. Jesus, take infirmity away. Take sickness away. When you, when you take it back to God like that, God says, no, I cannot. Joseph, why? Never. You can't be sick. If you are sick, who will praise me? As long as I am breathing, I will. Uh, you know, choir sing a thousand and one song. You know why I sing good that house? Because continuity, going concern is in that song. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship. So, if I don't worship him, nobody can worship him for me. But Victoria is a powerful worshiper. But how can she take my place in the place of worship? She, does she have my voice? She can't even have my voice. <laughs> Wonderfully and fearfully made. Sonorous. Enjoyed by God. You may not like it, but God likes it. <laughs> no one can worship you for me. This service here, it goes beyond the one we lift up our hand. It, we, are, we are bodily involved. Practically involved. And when God sees that, he said, no, this man really is from heaven. Your citizenship from heaven is a function of service. Because you are, when we serve him, we are propagating where we came from. Somebody is standing in this service to serve us. You need anything in this service? All you need to do is to lift up your hand. The usher lady comes to you. What do you want, sir? It makes it available to you. The choir comes here. It's service. Pastor is serving right now. Somebody is serving by the security stand. Someone is by the children's department. You will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He takes sickness away from the midst of you. The number of your days, I will fulfill. God saying that. When you are practically involved in service, all these good things begin to happen to you. So it's a new day. It's tied to service. And this afternoon, what are those two things? Physical service. Call it physical stewardship. Then financial service. Financial stewardship. We take those two things, then we pray in this service. Physical service. Physical stewardship. Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. You wrote so many things in your expectation for 2019. God says, make me first. Make for me first. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All those other things you are asking, they will be benefiting kind. Add them to you. Please, you must live God's first lifestyle. Kingdom first lifestyle. Whereby everywhere you go, you receive favor as a result of putting God first. When God is first, other things follow. Other things flow when you make God first. Be involved physically in moving the church forward. Come to Bethel and ask, what can I do to add color to this place? We are talking about physical stewardship now. Physical commitment. What can I do to move this church forward? How can I be of great help? Use your time. Use your expertise. Use the organization where you work. Oh, we used to have need of generator. You work in GMG? Go get special discount for us. Oh, use whatever God has given to you. Join a department. Be part of people who make things happen. Then the next four years, you will see the hand of God like never before. New things God declare is a function of those who serve. Don't come here for so long and not do anything. I've seen people lately, they chat me on social media. Oh, pastor, uh, I, I, I'm trusting God for a job. I want you to pray along with you. I don't even mind if there's an opening in your firm. Uh, can you please give me a job? And the first question is, which department are you? I, so I'm just thinking of joining a department. The food has not even gone around for the children first. We must serve the children first. I didn't say so. Jesus said so. And you know his following statement, which may offend you, if I say it. The children must be served first before you give the food to dogs. And the woman said, thank you, sir, for calling me a dog. Can I eat the one under the table? Must you always be served last in this church? Everybody must change their job minus you. You are the last to get a job. Because you are not serving. Who gives the job? Jehovah gives the job. And eternity is around for people. Please join the people that make things happen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Somebody said, but pastor, are we serving him because of a job? No. Job is a benefit in kind. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things. We, without prayer, we come. Did you think I pray for a wife? It's part of the BIK of serving. When I'm just worshiping God, somehow, inside that worship is a lady. Inside that worship is a job. Inside that worship is three boys. Inside that worship is something you don't even know about right now. Serve him. This thing you are praying about, going to mountain about, is inside service. It's in your Sokoto. The things you are looking for is in service. Your marriage, your future, your heritage is in service. PSEM, hear me. The next four years is in service. Not too much of saying amen. Serve him. Take service to the next level. Start the year and say, God, I have been serving in the choir. What more can I do for you, Lord? What more can I do for you, Lord? I just want you to, I, I want to take my service to the next level. In deep relationship with you. If you see things working, there are people who are working it. Join people who make things happen in the house of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. He talk about labor can be in vain. He said, but you know, for as much as you know, your labor for God will never be in vain. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God, knowing fully well that your labor for God will never be in vain. Job 36, 11. If they will be and serve him, they will spend the next four years and the rest of their life they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. We have 19 departments in this ministry as are today. Join one. 
there is a place where you can serve. Be part of those who make things happen. If you see anything working, somebody is working it. This microphone is not working by chance. When I came on this altar, there was no microphone. Somebody brought it here. I can be here forever if Brad Deji did not bring this microphone. Deji can bring this microphone and there is no life in it. If Gideon there will not give us power. Gideon can be the best professional, technical man, and is there with all his expertise. If there is no generator power, Gideon will just stand there. You see the chain effect. There is something you can do to add color to the house of God. Young, you can play your part. Coming to church, going to church, without working for God, is the reason why people have been stranded. Is the reason why we have long prayer lists. Those who genuinely serve, their prayer lists shrink. Because before they pray, God answer. Why they are still looking, God perform. They get things they never pray for. This is what Jehovah is laying on my heart. To enjoy the next four years. Take service to the next level. Ask, what can you do to take the church forward? Do it without being noticed. Do it without anybody noticing you. Come to this place and sweep. We pay somebody to do to clean this all. Join the young man. Make his labor easy. I told the young man one day, I said, during service, don't clear anything. Join service and hear the word of God so that your life can change. Before service, let's join. Let's be sure that the flowers are set. Things are looking better. But we don't want to offend you so that you don't bring offering here that is not being used. <laughs> and we're not going to put your offering in the corner. So send us pictures and we are sure that, okay, this match our taste for this auditorium. This auditorium is going to be our teen's church. Amen. This is not where we are going. Where we are going will be ten times this size. Amen. On this side. Amen. This side. This side. This side. This side. This side. This side. So, what are we saying? Be part. But while we are here, let's make this place habitable. Enjoy. While we are in transit to where we are going. Bethel is not our resting place. Jacob spent only one night in Bethel. We have spent one year. We need to move. That's not part of the agenda for this service. But when God says, I will do a new thing, a new auditorium is inclusive. A new place of worship is inclusive. Get ready for something new. Something great. But God is saying what will take us there is our service. Wake up to a new reality of serving God. And number two is your financial stewardship. Your financial stewardship. Be part of those who make things happen in the house of God. Despite all the messages we preach on first fruits, there's somebody who is permanently on exemption. Pastor, I don't understand that message. Though. I don't understand it. I've read that thing. I'm still praying that God will speak to me. <laughs> Genesis 8.22 As long as the earth remain, seed time and harvest shall not cease. How much is the salary? 35,000 naira per month. If you don't understand that message, what, which one will you understand? Which other one? Financial stewardship. Be part of the people that make things happen. Things don't just happen. Some people make them happen. Be part of it. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 126. He said, there is somebody who go. He sows in tires. He goes, and the Bible says he will reap in joy. But verse 6, but you see, there is he that go forth. This guy is weeping. He's carrying his precious seed. This is all I have. I mentioned 35,000 right now. Somebody's first fruit may be 20,000, 10,000. I know a lady here whose first fruit used to be 20 naira. She has brought it to the office there for pastors to pray on 20 naira before. But right now, she's in the, she's in the millions. You start small and grow big. There is somebody who is going, is weeping. Father, to drop this money, I'm weeping. Oh, this 100% is not even enough to pay the 10%. But because this is, now listen, there is no contract without consideration. 
This is the consideration to make the covenant effective. You are, you are weeping, but bearing precious seed. The cost, the time of the contract. The Bible says this person will doubtless, this one there is no doubt, will doubtless come against rejoicing, carrying his harvest with him. He shifts with him. But once upon a time when he was giving the offering, his hand was shaking. When he was transferring the money to the ministry bank account, his heart is shaking. There's somebody here who has been defaulting perpetually in tight. You have no honor the terms of the contract. You only shout, I am from heaven. <laughs> the things that make you heavenly, you don't do it. So you suffer what they suffer on earth. Remember my definition of, of, of covenant is a contract. It's a contract between two parties or two or more parties and they must be guided by the terms. And there is no contract without consideration. When you do your financial obligation, that's when you have activated. You really, and there are certain contracts that are not even written. But the fact that money is involved, the parties must respect whatever terms of the contract. I'd like you to lift up your voice. The next four years, Mention your name. Joseph, you will not suffer. The next four years, new things I declare. Begin to prophesy to yourself. I will be involved in the house of God. My strength, my energy, my time, my resources, my money, everything will be involved. Lift up your voice. Pray for yourself. 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 I will not suffer in the land. On the screen are the 19 department we have in this ministry. Pray for yourself right now. I want to be a part of those who make things happen in this house. I take my commitment, my relationship with you to the next level. The next four years will be glorious for me. Everywhere I go, there will be a turnaround. Things are working. I like you to lift up your voice and make sure you are praying for yourself. No shame, no reproach. Somebody declare the next four years. No barrenness, no unfruitfulness. Whatever I lay my hand upon in the next four years shall prosper. I'm blessed and highly favored. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer for yourself. Declare I receive favor from the north, from the east, from the south, from the west. Lift up your voice. I receive favor. I receive favor. I receive favor. I receive favor. In the name of Jesus. In the next four years, men and women will go out of their way to bless me. The billion pastor prophesy is my portion. My business prosper. Whatever I lay my hand upon prosper. Lift up your voice and pray for yourself. <laughs> 